Hello there, it's Matthew Miller, and yes, I'm going to be talking about the drought here in New Zealand. As a beekeeper, and to know that actually the drought is actually affecting me as a beekeeper, because when I actually checked my hive recently, and I actually found that the honey production had either slowed down or stopped, and I find out to be quite worrying because I was looking forward to my first harvest of honey and I don't think that's going to be ever to be the case as long as this drought does continue unless we get some rain within the next 10 days before March I just hope that's going to be the case and the reason why I'm talking about because yeah, with this drought, there could be some geoengineering in play, and, and and I'm going to get to that as well. But first, let's just cover the news article that for the New Zealand Hill. New Zealand drought, Auckland set to break a record for the longest dry spell, and yet, yeah, yeah, from Auckland, and yet. Yeah, it's just to know all that grass and that, that's over and it's all people taking a high go on this nice hot day on this on this mountain here in Auckland on One Tree One Tree Hill. Yeah, with with no rain forecast before then it was almost to become forty days on Sunday. Another forecast has been all says. So, no rain forecast, which is a very worrying sign. And yet, once for it, yeah, because of me as a beekeeper, and to know that back in California, they had that massive drought, it had really affected beekeeping and honey production. And yet, the reason why. I'm showing you this because me as beekeeper, it is really affecting me and it is really hindering my opportunity to actually even have my first harvest this year, this season, and which that's not going to really be the case as long as drought continues unless we get rain before March. Now I could go on talking about it, but let's just move on for now. And yet, a drought declared in Northland at less than 80k in government assistance. Farmers and the other rivers affected by the prolonged dry river that can now tap into government assistance declaring a drought. Yet, the declaration of a drought. Oh boy, yeah, because there's a lady, yeah, there's a, yeah, a lady that actually do cover about dear engineer as well, and it's an awful as well, and she was, yeah, it talks about that, that Jeremy could be in play, and it could be, yeah, that Jeremy near this, yeah, around New Zealand, in play, that could be the culprit, so I ain't gonna take a look at that, so I just gotta cover the news article, and, so let's just move on to the next one there and Northland drought. Fungi urged to cut water by 20% to avoid restrictions. Well, and well, if that con drought conti uh, continues, yeah, if that drought does continue. We are most likely to face water restriction. You can see those poor farmers, they had to like get water to fill up their troughs for their cattle so they can stay hydrated. Those poor farmers, and for, because they eat yeah, poor cattle, and boy, and they're telling them to say, well, they got to keep their cattle well hydrated, and, they, and of course, with all the hay they had harvest. First they're trying to save for under all the silage, they probably would have to use that if they're gonna yeah, keep the cows fed. Yeah, so grim. And the lack of rain frustrating 
Tarantaki Farmers, it's a Tarantaki Steve Farmers. Yeah, so grown, man. Hmm, yeah, it does make my head spin, man. It really, that grief is really hitting me. Goodness sakes, because I do have my feelings towards those farmers. How they're separate, uh, saying the stuff as well, because. Yep, because I actually had grew on a dairy farm, and we actually had been through a drought before. And when we went through a drought, we ended up going an irrigation dam, and just in case we do end up facing our drought, which that didn't come to like 16 years later, which it occurred like around 2010. Yep, yeah, not 20. Yep, yeah. yeah. Now the irrigation dam was like, yeah, the construction like began in 1994, and it finished in 1997, so yeah, so grown, man yeah, the yeah, government declared a drought in Northland and parts of Auckland, and yeah and also in Waikato and Teramagi and they're all affected and And they're not getting a lot of rain, and or probably nothing at all. And yet, there's the water restrictions there, and yeah, it will soon probably take place. And look, like if that drought does continue, it will most likely to take place. And which it is growing, and we're not going to be able to water our guns, so we have to use grey water, which we are going to get to the water restrictions pretty soon. And which we're going to get to it right now and restrict yeah, restriction of place and yeah oh yeah our own weather has the as the record hit the record low so here we go there's the water restrictions there yeah water crisis defense wolf restrictions typhoon and there it is right there and yet I ain't going to write from say no attended houses sprinklers yes level two level two no attended houses sprinklers or irrigation systems or handheld hose allowed carry carry and white papa and ovary and pie and takatana and yeah, all the rest though, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's, they uh, got the level 2 water restrictions, and now level 3, no water in gardens or lawns or sprinkler with hoses or sprinklers, no washing vehicles except with buckets, no washing Boys or paved areas, no falling swimming pools. So it's level two and now level four, that's the highest level it's gonna be up to. Essential cooking, drinking, hygiene only, that's with level four and boy this is so grim. And yeah, and I'm gonna go with the beekeeper. Create a water source for bees, and yet that's what you can do. And hmm, shows a small body. You're gonna need something a bit bigger than that, cause it's not like we're gonna get rain for like any time. So I hope we'll get like within ten days before March, so we can get my first honey house. So yet yeah, there's a video about creating a water source for bees, and yeah, you can feel free to watch that as well if you want to get your bees hydrated and. And I am looking into that as well, and so I can keep my bees hydrated. And now we are going to be looking into that geoengineering stuff, and let's go to it right now. And, and there's one from, yeah, from Northland, Ken. Oh! Accidentally clicked it on and oh yeah 
Yeah, Northland King Trial Watch, and this is from Man My Drive Continuous King Trial Operation on the 16th. Before rain expected on the 17th, virtually no rain fell. Yeah, because that's the day when I was checking my high. And that's when my honey production was actually slowed down and stopped because there was actually no flowers near the hive. They had to fly at a distance now and the drought's really taking a toll. And yeah, if the wolf the north thing can try watch out if they if they are correct on that, there's really running news. Because if they can really control the weather, river, and if they get you in the wrong hands or so, that means if they hit, yeah, if they have like a gender and they want, yeah, I can. Because I actually have heard of Agenda 21 and they could just use the weather to try to force people off their land into jam packed cities by using the weather. And how? By controlling the weather. And that is very worrying. And and I actually had took a bit of my. Uh, there was a can trial that sprayed in the sky just near my property, and it was like heading northeast. Yeah, it was heading northeast. So when well, I shot at the end of this video, so let's just move on to the satellites. This is from way back in 2014. Satellite shades. Clouds into the east with, with the fighter hands on man and boy, yeah. And this looks like from the NASA site as well. I can just read it, <laughs> just. And all things right there. And what the hell are they really doing? Why they really want to spray the sky? And that is a good question. And it happened to be rain forecast, but yeah, yeah. you know, because when I was checking my high, the only thing, the only type of rain we got, spits. That's all. Just spits. Probably not even a millimeter of rain. Not even a millimeter. And boy, my hands don't get wild up with it by even looking into it as well. And there's another one from the Northland. Can try watch and yet there is right there. Northland rain, robbery, and drought are the massive aerosol operation. Proceeds the rain forecast on for the February 8th, 20 trading and yet. <sighs> Why are they? Trying to stop rain from falling in Northland. I'm just wondering why. Why are they spraying all those aerosols to try to stop rain? I know I'm saying to get off on a rant because it is rain. Right, of course, me as beekeeper, because flowers and that, they need water, they need rain for it to grow. And bees, they actually need a pollen dollar. And, and if that drought really continues, Man, getting honey for the season is going to be close to mill, and <sighs> this is just so not acceptable what this with this geo engineering going on, trying to stop rain from falling. But crying out loud, it's not this is so unacceptable. And for me, I don't consent this, and nor should you. Because if they can sort of like just control the weather, and look like it is already in the wrong hands. I mean, they do have an agenda or something like Agenda 21, trying to get us off our land and to turn back to our I said it before, and I happen to be chatting to a lady and saying, oh, it would be amazing to bring rain, but the thing is, she was mentioning a little bit about geoengineering, but if it sort of get into the wrong hands, they could sort of create a drought. If those people, 
He do have the technology art in here and that and and he sort of wants to control people and and try to force an agenda and to get it off their land, that's what they will use. Geoengineering to create a drought. So frightening. And you know you're gonna think I think I'm gonna talk in something that's gonna be our science fiction movie. Well uh, it is now actually science fact. Well, I'm gonna just move on now. <laughs> I'm getting wild up with this now. And yet, yeah, let's get to it as well. And yet, yeah, this one's from Harvard University, and you know where it is in the USA. Harvard University saw the geoengineering research project, and yet, yeah, you know what that geoengineering? Oh, it's there to stop climate change! <laughs> Steer the stock contracts. Geoengineering refer to see an emerging technology that could manipulate the environment and partially set offsets the impact of a climate change while creating droughts. Soil and Padova could not be a replacement of existing emissions. And yeah. <laughs> And it actually even shows the graphs that says that oh we need to do geoengineering to stop climate change. <laughs> oh so they it's like they show their own graphs so they can get below a two degrees mark. Well, do you know what controls climate change? The sun people it is not CO2. It's not you, it is the sun. And with the geoengineering programs trying to control the river and that dog and not I am so down with that geoengineering stuff. I don't consent it no, I do not consent that. I don't consent of the river being controlled. I'll say just leave it to nature for yeah, because they want to, yeah, and they want to like spray like sulfur dioxide and charcoal and that though, and there's a fellow from the Dad 2030 I was talking about though, yeah, the mini ice age, yeah, from the geoengineering begins spring 2090 and that, yeah, the harder you geoengineering is already in play and you probably know that geoengineering's been going on for decades, and yet since this lady in Kentrail, Northland Kentrail Watch, New Zealand, she's been going on for a decade covering about Kentrails, and and probably know geoengineering in New Zealand's probably been going on probably even longer than probably even for, mm, 20, 30, or more than 50 years or so been going on for decades and yeah from day to one the cry off of that 2030 on YouTube and yeah he discusses about sort of change as the earth shifts as the core control to the eddy grand sort of move and intensify the 400 year cycle in our sun that could affect our crop production and our, and our colony and everyone in our planet and there's a ton of what you can expect from 2023. Yeah, well, if that's really the case, though, well, I don't find when really it's a ton of memory in January, it just doesn't really mix because that's going to call anyway because sometimes suns do go into a dormant state, and yeah, it says that first, so yeah, January experiment began. Spring 29 undertaken by Harvard University, and yet, yeah, which I had covered that just to try to stop climate change and the plans to dim the sunlight striking the earth is out on track. Spring 2019, aerial spray of car calcium carbonate or sulfur dioxide. So, not just a uh, Aluminum or aluminium 
knit strong to and bear and all those other stuff. It's also going to probably contain some calcium carbonate or sulfur dioxide and yet yeah, cover the planet with trees before we spray the earth skies. It's been going on! <laughs> the spraying of the earth has been going on for probably well over a decade. Yeah, so it's been going on, he's just been covering it from the Harvard University. University of Phoenix Geodonor has been going on before even Harvard was thinking about taking out the Geodonor program. Yeah, uh, yeah, Stir, Stir, Spear, Control, yeah, they're trying to control the weather and and to flirt and to promote the Arctic Sea Squash, well, it's always been growing on the planet. Do you put those on the sh uh, ships with using bunker fuel? India and China pollute, become unchecked, and the temperature and all. It will cool naturally because of the eddy, granite solar movement, yeah, so. So, so will take credit for calling the planet and their programs. And yet, artificial trees, and yet, and the tambora eruption, yeah, without summer, and oh boy, yeah. And yet, you can know what sulfur dioxide, you can know what it does when it gets into the planet. It creates acid rain, people, yeah, acid rain. And if you're going to spray sulfur dioxide, yeah, it's caused, yeah. Acid rain is caused by. Emission of sulfur dioxide and oxide, which is react with the molecules in the atmosphere to produce acids. Yeah, it sort of lowers the pH in the wine droplet, so it becomes acid wine. So, <coughs> more people with the drought and and for this man may. Drought continues, oh boy, if it is really the case or so, and if the journey is, is being playing trying to stop farmers from getting wine, man is just creating a recipe for this disaster. And that's why I don't consent to this geoengineering stuff as well, so that's why we had to talk about it. Go to really talk about it, so. People can know better what is really happening to our skies. And yes, I can manage to create a video which I'm going to put at the end of this video as well, which I will show to you. Oh, so, that's all I got to really say for now. This is Matthew Miller sign off, over, and out. Those things and...